Hi there, my name's Adrian, and in this lesson we're going to be looking at how to play Girls and Boys by Blur. Now this is a fantastic song, one of the iconic tunes of my childhood and adolescence. This uh, brings back a lot of good memories of the 1990s for me, this one. And the guitar part is of course played by Graham Coxon, who is a fantastically accomplished guitar player and musician, but not in any kind of show-offy guitar hero type of way. He's one of those players who's more interested in coming up with great guitar parts like this one, or in coming up with interesting sounds and textures, rather than playing the usual kind of cock rocky type of uh, cliches. So let's take a closer look at how to play this song. We're going to start here in the third position with this G7 chord. I'm playing the third fret on the sixth string with my first finger. I'm playing the fifth fret on the fifth string with my third finger. I'm playing the third fret on the fourth string also with my first finger. It's just barring across those strings. And then I'm playing the fourth fret on the third string with my second finger. So you should have these four notes, which as I say is a G7 chord. Now what we're going to do is we're going to play the lowest two notes in that chord twice, and then we're going to play the middle two notes um, on the guitar, the third and fourth strings, and immediately we're going to pull off with our second finger to our first finger. So we have this kind of effect. nice kind of discordant sound. We're going from the major third to the to the minor third there. With my right hand I'm playing that with a down, down and then an up. Up pick on the middle two strings just to make those notes really pop out. Probably also using a little bit of palm muting on the lower notes in that chord as well. So we're going to play that four times. Then we're going to go to the next chord, which is a C type of chord, or a C7 type of sound, I think. We're going to play the third fret on the fifth string with our first finger, fifth fret on the fourth string with our third finger, then I'm going to play the fourth fret on the third string with my second finger. Again, I'm going to play the lowest two notes there the fourth and fifth strings. Then I'm going to play the middle two strings on the guitar, the third and fourth strings. And again I'm going to do the same pull off idea from the fourth fret to the third fret. So pulling off immediately with my second finger. So we have this kind of sound. Again a fantastically angular and discordant sounding riff this one. So, so far we've got this. We've got the G7 chord four times. We switch to the C chord. Now at this point we're going to turn on our flanger effect and uh, it's a bit hard to hear on the recording exactly what notes he's, he's playing but I think he's playing this F chord whilst he's got the flanger effect on and that sounds something like this. So the notes I'm playing there, I've got my third finger at the third fret on the fifth string, my little finger is just underneath that at the third fret on the fourth string, second finger is playing the second fret on the third string, first finger is playing the first fret on the second string. So it's an F chord we've got. It's like an F bar chord but I'm not barring all the way with my first finger there. I'm actually just muting the two outside strings. So the first string I'm muting by just leaning into it with my first finger. I've also got my thumb wrapped around the top to keep the, the low E string muted. And rhythmically what's going on here is we're just playing sixteenths notes. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And we've just got two bars worth of that on the F chord and with the flanger on it sounds like this. Then we're going to turn our flanger off and we're going to play this bit. And what's going on here is we've got an E flat triad. I and mean, if you know your 
open position D major chord. It's the same finger shape as that, but we're sliding the fingers up by one fret. So my first finger is playing the third fret on the third string. My third finger is playing the fourth fret on the second string. And my second finger is playing the third fret on the first string. It's an E, E flat triad. I'm also going to add in this note here with my little finger, which is the fifth fret on the fourth string. That's also part of an E flat chord. So you should have these four notes. We're going to play that chord once. Then we're going to lift up our little finger. So we've now got an open D string and we're going to play that chord twice. So we've got our little finger down once, release our little finger, play that chord twice and the rhythm we've got there is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so I'm playing that with a down up up down up uh, makes makes sense to play the uh, upward strum on the up beats in in the rhythm so it's one and two and three and four and and we're going to play that three times so one two three and then the last bit of the riff is just this playing an f sharp chord to an F chord. The same F chord that we played with the, the flanger part of the riff. We're just going to move that up one fret. We're going to play an F sharp and then an F. And uh, on the recording you can hear he's hitting these chords quite aggressively. They, they sound kind of weird and out of tune. It's possibly got some kind of pitch shifter effect or something on there or he might just be playing really aggressively and bending the neck on the guitar a, a little bit. They certainly sound slightly weird uh, but weird in a, in a very cool way. So let me just play the entire riff so you can see how it all fits together. We're starting with the G riff. And to C. Flanger on the F. round again and there we have it it's more or less the same riff I think it's exactly the same riff throughout the entire song it sort of drops out in a couple of places but that's that's all of the rhythm guitar part for, for the song now, just for the sake of completeness, there's one other guitar part in this song that I can hear, and that is a little single note motif part. It's uh, not exactly a guitar solo, it's more of an anti-guitar solo, I suppose. And it sounds like this. If I just turn my tremolo pedal on, it goes... Uh As you can hear, it's very simple but effective single note part. I'm playing that with quite an extreme tremolo effect on it just to give it that weird kind of wobbly sound. Now this is pretty straightforward to play. Let me just take you through the notes. As I say, it's all played on the first high E string. I'm going to play the 15th fret on that string with my first finger. I'm going to hammer on with my second finger to the 16th fret. And then I'm going to play the 18th fret on the same string with my third finger. So we've got this. So the hammer on from first to second fingers. And I'm going to play the 18th fret. And I'm going to do that four times. Then I'm going to play this, which is a hammer on from the 15th to 16th frets and then playing the 15th fret. Again, I'm playing that with my first and second fingers and I'm going to do that four times. Then we play this, which is again hammer on from the 15th to 16th frets. This time 
it's second to third finger I'm using and then I'm playing the 13th fret with my first finger so we have this and we do that again four times then we go back to the original three note motif and play that four more times to finish so once again if I turn on the effects the tremolo and a bit of distortion I'll, I'll put that all together for you here we go Uh, there we have it. Well that's it for this lesson. I hope you have some fun playing this guitar part. I think it's a really good example of an unusual angular slightly weird guitar riff that really makes the song exciting and one thing I think you can draw from this is the importance of trying to come up with some original and interesting guitar parts that go beyond the usual cliches. So don't be afraid to be weird, don't be afraid to experiment. Try some crazy chord shapes that you don't know what the names of them are. Don't be afraid to pile on some extreme effects. And often that's a really good route through the cliches, beyond the cliches, to come up with something that is unique. I hope to see you for another lesson again very soon. Bye bye.